Listen, this video will be different than I expected it to be. I wanted to talk about what space repetition and muscle memory have in common, and I soon figured out that it's not what I thought it was. Rather, it's the exact other way around. Don't worry, I will explain what those two things mean later in the video, and I will give you a meter sketch with specific recommendations on how much and on which days you should practice based on how much time you have. Let's get down to what I found out. It's pretty complicated, so you probably won't understand everything, but I still give my best to explain it to you. First of all, we have to know what space repetition is. This graph is called the Ebbinghaus Forgetting Curve, and it shows us how fast we forget something after the first time learning it. As you can see, after 20 minutes, you already lost 42% of what you learned. After two days, you can just remember 28%. And this is where space repetition comes in. If we look at this diagram right here, we can see that after repeating whatever we learned for the first time, the curve decreases less fast, after the second time again less fast, and after the third time it's literally a straight line. This shows us that repeating things spaced over time makes us remember whatever we learned better. The more often we repeat something, the less often we have to repeat it to remember it. And this works for our muscle memory as well. Muscle memory is the ability to reproduce a particular movement without conscious thought acquired as a result of frequent repetition of that movement. If you can play a piece pretty well, you don't need to practice it every day just to be able to play it. Maybe once or twice per week, you practice the few difficult parts and you know that you could be able to perform it in a very short amount of time. But learning a new piece doesn't work like this at all. Every day you practice, no matter how long you practice, there's some kind of barrier you cannot surpass. A barrier that determines how well you can play something. If 100% is perfection, on the first day of practicing it, you probably won't get more than 30%. This means that the 100% you can achieve on day one are just 30% of the end result. The 100% of the second day could already be 45%. And this is where the combination of spaced repetition and muscle memory comes in. If you don't practice something for a few days, the potential you will have practicing it the next time will still be higher on day one, but significantly lower than on day two or maybe three. The potential of the following day then is based on the combined score of the two days you practiced before. Therefore, it will be lower than if you would not have gone so many days without practicing. Let's make a concrete example. You practice something for the first day on a Monday, your potential is 30%. The next time you practice, let's say on a Friday, your potential is something like 38%, and then again on Monday, and your potential is something like 45%. What if you would decrease the amount of days in between practicing, but without practicing more on total? You practice on Monday, 30%, Wednesday, 40%, Friday 50%, you've achieved more in less time with the same amount of hours. Why? Because while not practicing, your muscle memory and your brain lost too much information about how to perform these complex movements. It's not just the potential decreasing, it's what you forget, what you unlearn that stops the potential from going up. And that's the fun part. I could have easily just said, practice more and practice more often. And you know this, this is common sense. But I'm giving you here the very fine, professional, nuanced way how to practice. And if you like this information, you may consider subscribing, it would make me very happy. The next logical step would be to say, if not losing information makes me learn the fastest, why don't I just practice one page until I can play it perfectly? Because of the 100% daily potential that you can't overreach on any given day, and because of the Pareto principle. François Welker will make a short summary for us. Ah non, je veux plus d'argent, tu veux te moquer de moi? Speak English. I told you a thousand times, I don't speak French. I want more money. How much? Ça dépend. Ça dépend? Ça dépend on what exactly? How much I have to explain? You have to explain Pareto. You have done that a million times. Je veux 500 euros. Speak English! 500 dollars. Listen, you French dick. You do corporation? I'm gonna shoot your ugliest dog. The Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20% rule, was introduced by Wilfredo Pareto. It was first used in macroeconomics to describe the distribution of wealth in Italy in the early 20th century. Pareto found out that 80% of the wealth is owned by 20% of the people. In more general terms, 80% of the result is made by 20% of the effort, and the last 20% of the result is made by 80% of the effort. Applied to practicing, this would mean that you should focus on those 20% that bring you the most results on a daily basis, whatever that means for you. You should not neglect the other 80%, but the 20% should be your main focus. 
if you want those 98%, you would have to practice comparatively way more than if you would just want the 80%. So why don't you just practice one page until you can play it perfectly? Because you would have to practice about the same amount than if you would try to learn four pages at 80%. And because potential increases every day you practice, you would see more progress in the long term. Also, I do believe that our body and brain need time to learn these complex movements when we are not practicing. And because of this, the use of Pareto and the potential combined from different days, I'd rather practice 30 minutes on three different days than 1.5 hours on one day and then not practicing for two days. Obviously, practicing 1.5 hours every day would be better. And all of this is also why you should start with the most difficult stuff. Your brain needs the longest to learn it. You need the most repetitions on different days to maximize potential and Pareto here could be something like there's one very difficult part and the rest of the piece is not that difficult and you won't take that long to learn it but if there's a weak or non-existent link in a chain you won't be able to play the piece at all. Now I want to give you a few practice schedules you could follow. The first one is for people who do not have that much time to practice or just don't want to practice that much with a total of 1.5 hours per week. I would practice on three days for each 30 minutes with always one day off as a rest day in between. That way you won't go more than two days without practicing and you won't forget what you learn throughout the whole week because you get a very frequent stimulation. This is how a week could look like. You practice on Monday, Wednesday and Friday for each 30 minutes. If you also have a lesson or a band class or orchestra, you can plan it in there so that you play on more frequent days. Maybe like this, practicing on Tuesday, lesson on Wednesday and then again practicing on Friday and Sunday. Don't try to practice on a day you have a lesson or a band class because practicing more frequent days will be more beneficial, except you just want to practice that day. If you don't have any other lessons, maybe you can still practice on Sunday so that you don't go two days without practicing or you just practice for 30 minutes every second day, whatever week it is. I wouldn't do much less than 20 minutes per day because it always takes time to get back into a specific task and everything lower just means that you will lose too much time getting back into practicing. The other option is to practice five times for 20 minutes. I don't know what is more efficient. You have to try it out and see it for yourself. Here you can just choose two days you don't want to practice, preferably not right behind each other because of the reasons mentioned before. Maybe this is the better option for young people because you probably can't concentrate for longer periods of time. Schedule number two with a total amount of 3.5 hours per week. As I mentioned, I wouldn't do much less than 20 minutes per day, but here we can practice for 30 minutes every day. Option number three. The more you want to practice after 30 minutes are reached, just increase the time per day for the same amount each day. So don't try to practice for 7 hours on one day and then just 30 minutes on every other day, except it's the only possibility then yes okay. But I'd rather do 1.5 hours each day then. Obviously practicing more on one day because you have just so much fun is everything else than bad, unless you hurt yourself, but we're talking about a normal routine here, not a free day you just go crazy. If you want to be professional at some point, you should at least practice for two hours each day. Three would be even better. Singers tend to do a bit less because they can't practice for that long and violinists and pianists practice the most, but there are always exceptions. If you have a huge repertoire to learn, here's what I was gonna do. Let's say you have six months for 60 minutes of music. Before watching this video, you probably would have said something like, in the first three months, I'm going to learn the first 30 minutes and in the second three months, I'm going to learn the other 30 minutes. But now you know why this is not very efficient. I'd rather do something like this. Two months for the first 30 minutes while already playing the other 30 minutes, let's say twice per week, just super slowly so you get to know them and maybe practice the three most difficult parts. Then month three and four, you learn the second 30 minutes while practicing the first 30 minutes, maybe two hours per week and playing them once or twice super slowly again. And then in month five and six, you can finesse what you learned go hard on what is not working and definitely play everything twice very slowly per week. This is what I was gonna do on a bigger scale. But for the same example, you can do this for just one week. Let's say one piece is not that difficult. You practice it three times per week with always one day in between. And there's this other piece that is super difficult. Practice it every day and start where it hurts. Starting where it hurts the most is always a great advice, I believe in any area of life. If you haven't gotten it yet, what this video wanted to tell you is that you have to practice at least every second day if you want to maximize your efficiency and potential. Use what you learned to plan out, preferably with a schedule, your weeks and months 
what you want to practice and when you want to practice it and I'm pretty sure you will outperform your peers from orchestra, band class or whoever else is your academy. You do have everything that you need to know about practicing now, but if you don't use this information and if you don't have the right motivation to practice, this video was just a waste of time. That's why you should check out this video right here in which I explain everything that you need to know about motivation and how I trick my brain to like boring practice. Thanks for watching and we see each other on the next one.